Hello, welcome. My name is San. This is a reading today for Virgo. There are no dates on my readings. I trust that when they find you, if they resonate, then they're yours at that time. Virgo, I'm doing your reading with three decks blended into one, so you'll see a mix of all three in your spread today. So we've got the five of air on the split. This card is my grace card. It means that you are working in grace, working with the energy of grace. Um, it's like, basically it's saying like the universe is working with you. You are being supported by the divine kind of a thing, right? But four of fire, four of wands at the bottom of the deck. Okay, so it looks something like this. This phase or state of grace that you have attained or are moving through currently is leading to this four of wands in the future. And it's interesting because the moon is here right under the four of wands and it's almost like there's, it's something like it's unseen. Maybe what it is that you're doing, this state of grace, this work that you're doing with grace is unseen or unproven. For example, it's almost like behind the scenes. It's not well known. It's not public. But with this four of wands, the, the grace... The grace is leading towards this four of wands. It's almost like at some point it becomes apparent and acknowledged. That's what this is talking about. It's almost like you being thanked or appreciated or celebrated for what it is that you accomplished, which could be like profound healing, actually, when I'm looking through the deck here, profound healing because you've got the wheel of fortune and the star underneath this grace that that you're holding so it's almost like um turning you're turning the wheel with the with the star energy talking about like healing bringing bringing healing being bringing correction of energy a rebalancing of energy which totally makes sense because you're starting with the justice card and that card's always talking to me about a correction being made right so it feels like you're the one making the correction bringing the justice turning the wheel though that might not be known or perceived by others, maybe not even by you at this point. So that's what it's looking like here on the table. It's like you're not quite sure if what you're doing is effective, perhaps, or if it's going to pan out in the way that you anticipate. And I feel like this is confirmation that it is and it will, right? Because you're, you're heading towards that four of wands. Okay, overall energy from the Lifruma Healing Oracle for Virgo. New bud. See, that's per this is the perfect card, actually. It talks about new magic. Where does it say that? Early magic. That's what it is. Create, germinate, and pause. Wait. There is timing. That is so what I'm already seeing in the cards here today. It's a beautiful energy. It's that iridescent, translucent energy that I've been seeing in the readings for a while. It's like there's this new energy coming in, and I want to say that, Virgo, you are tapping into it maybe maybe not fully aware of the extent that you're working with this new magic. What is it? Early magic, early magic. It's like there's an, there's an energy that is in your life that you are working with, but it's still in the early phases. So you haven't seen it like play out yet. Okay. Because <clears throat> pretty much everything that I said there is echoed here in the reading. It's like you're doing something really potent, really powerful with this justice card and the stars in the sky, limitless possibilities. The justice talks about a rebalancing or a correction, right? I want to say this is not your energy. Maybe this is more like the universal energy perhaps that you're working with because here are the stars in the sky. I want to say this is you because you have a connection to higher aspects or you have a connection to the universe. Like you're very well connected because of that. It's like the energy is working through you to bring this justice energy in. Does that make sense? So it almost looks like you're sitting maybe in meditation, sitting with strong intention, and then sending out with the page of air, um, like an intention or maybe even a, an actual literal message, an email, a text message, a phone call, it, or it could just be energetic, right? That you're sending out a message kind of after working with or reworking this energy here, wanting to see justice, wanting to see correction in a situation. It's almost like you're doing something to create that and then you're and then you're releasing it to the universe. That's what this looks like, right? Which is 
completely, absolutely ideal with the King of Fire coming next. I want to say this is you, Virgo, today. You're this King of Fire, this passive King of Fire, actually, completely invested in something that is like totally connected to your heart, right? Totally connected to your heart. It's kind of coming through as the potential of this correction is um, very enlivening to you. It, it, it kind of um, activates you in some way. This knowing that things could be corrected or that the correction could be made and that you seem to have uh, an idea about how that could be or what your part is in that correction, okay? But you know that you have to kind of release it and allow it to play out because you're doing that. I see that here with the page of air and like releasing it, doing the work. It's like very actively doing something and then releasing it and, and um, kind of sitting back and allowing the magic to play out, right? With the king of fire. But with this four of swords coming next, it's like... You're not seeing any results for a time and it's beginning to make you uncomfortable. So perhaps that's where you are now. It's like you've already set something in motion, maybe expecting it to come back very quickly. It's making me think of that Pisces reading I did recently where it was talking about kind of sending a light signal out to somebody telepathically, you know, at a distance and getting an immediate reaction. So there's this expectation maybe, even though you know that it's out of your hands, you have to release it and wait um, perhaps you were expecting a response or a reaction or something to happen more quickly than it is. And so you're at this phase now where it's starting to, you're starting to question it, perhaps starting to second guess whether or not anything is going to come of it. With the night of earth coming next though, I feel like this is, yes, this is something coming of it. This night of earth, this is, it's almost like there's this manifestation or there's an individual that you have impacted that is kind of marching towards you with that message, it being the night that it's a messenger energy. It's like they're, but they're not moving quickly, right? With the, it's the night of pentacles, it's the night of earth. So it's, it's not moving quickly at all. You've got all this air energy around you, of course, right? So that's the thing. You, Gemini or Gemini, Virgo, Gemini is so in my energy today. I almost had to keep, like, I had to keep thinking, did I already do Gemini? I think I did. I did do Gemini a couple readings ago. So why is Gemini so dominant today? Maybe that's what we're talking about here, Virgo, is that maybe you are working with a Gemini or the, this could be all about a, a Gemini energy for you because you are surrounded by this air, which is fascinating. Even though you're embodying this king of fire, being an earth sign, but embodying the king of fire, but in a very earthy way, right? Because you're very um, allowing and passive, meaning like you've, you've done what you need to do and you know that now is the time to be just receptive or passive and allow it to work. So that's why you're embodying this energy here. You can see how you, but you're surrounded by all of this air, right? So it's like there, maybe there is a Gemini energy all around you or it's, it's, something that there's something about that but the night of earth it could be that too whatever whoever it is that you may be waiting for a response from may be generally typically very airy very uh um kind of fast moving quick communicator quick mind right but in this situation they're not they're much slower than they are usually, and I want to say actually, interestingly, it's because of the profound impact that your influence is having on this situation. It is changing how they behave or move or act. It's, it's creating a significant shift in the way, in their ways. So if you generally expect them to be quick, responsive, light as air, they're coming in with this, this slower moving earth energy, but still, I feel like it's going to be a confirmation for you when this does arrive. It's just not arriving in the timing that you, that you're hoping for. It's like, there's this real, um, awareness or acknowledgement on your part that it's not going to be instant, but it is taking longer than is, is comfortable for you to the point where you're second guessing it. Right. 
But I think, and that's why that's all coming out here, everything that came out is the fact that you are heading towards this Four of Wands, for sure. But the magic is early, right? It is still early in the process, even though you would expect maybe for it to, for magic to be like instantaneous. And it could be, it could actually be really quick, but that doesn't mean that it reaches you in a timely manner. Do you see what I mean? Okay, so the Eight of Cups and the Four of Earth coming next is talking about leaving behind. It's interesting because this does look like the magician to me. Leaving behind your need to kind of almost like watch the, the pot boil, right? The Four of Earth here talks about somebody who is... This is the interesting thing. You may have started out being um, okay with allowing things to play out naturally and releasing it to the universe. But here is where... The time is ticking, perhaps. You're not getting the response you thought in the time that you expected. And so you're starting to want to check in, for example, because this four of earth talks to me about somebody who is reluctant to allow nature to take its course, wants to be the gardener, wants to be the manifester, the magician, wants to shape things very deliberately and intentionally. And it's like, but you've already done all of that work back here like purely energetically and or at a distance. And it's like, here is where it almost maybe can tip into this idea of meddling. If you, if you continue to focus in this direction, even if it's just continuing to wonder about it, it's tipping into meddling with the energy. It's an undesirable shift you don't want to go into this place you want to leave this behind right so the guidance here with the queen of fire it's interesting because you got the king of fire and now you've got the queen of fire and what this was looking like to me if you can see there's he's looking this way she's looking this way and i want to say this is you both of these are you and it has to do with that you you hold two focuses that you have two um two main things that you're that you care about or two it's almost like two kinds of work or two main goals something like that right and this one here has been i don't want to say it's consuming you but it's the thing that you've been doing recently it's the it's the most recent investment right is working on this correcting this injustice or correcting a situation I want to say that's at a distance from you because you're kind of sending it out, working with the universe and sending it out. So it feels like it doesn't quite belong to you directly. It's not like you're trying to fix a situation for yourself. I want to say maybe you're doing work on behalf of the collective or you're doing work for other people, right? And so kind of just sending it out. That's what this is talking about. This here is another focus that you have. And it's kind of saying, Turn your focus from here back over to here. It's interesting. It's almost like this is something that you've been doing for some time, perhaps. It's basically like refocus over here. There's work for you to do over here in this direction that maybe you have let go for a while because you were turned in this direction. See what I'm saying? So it's saying, okay, turn back this way. And when you turn back this way, it's focusing on almost like a community or a family with the jeweled web connectivity here it's saying focus on maybe the things that are closer up to you because this other situation seems to be at somewhat of a distance right because it's almost like you're sending your messenger bird out to deal with this situation for you get the message through to you but interestingly look at this one it's like suddenly this bird is coming back in right there is a response there is a reaction there is kind of like evidence playing out but the guidance here is to focus on the connectivity, the jeweled web, and the uh, seven of air coming next. It's talking about almost like gathering up the people closest to you. The seven of air sometimes talks to me about like calling a meeting. It's like calling everybody in, wanting to have a conversation with a group, right? It's very, it's really emphasizing more than one person. It's like a group conversation or a group meeting or consultation. And you're the one calling it. You're just calling in all of these connections. And the interesting thing is, with the Knight of Fire coming next, it's like because you got so much fire energy here. It feels like you've been kind of like activated recently. You're suddenly embodying all this fire energy, which feels to me like 
you maybe suddenly know what it is that you're supposed to be doing. You suddenly are having like all these ideas to the point where you've got multiple focuses, right? It's like you can, you can do this work over here or you can do this work over here and it's all very alive and active, right? It's like there's a lot to do with the fire energy. There's a lot of action to be taken. So what it's looking like is almost as if you're calling everybody to you the seven of air also talks about like-minded too, right? So it's kind of like the people that light you up, perhaps the people that you have strong connection with, meaning um, like kindred spirits, calling in all the kindred spirits and having a meeting. But what it's looking like here, I'm not sure why this night of fire is looking to me like te well, maybe because of this, because of this teachability coming up next, but it looks like somebody who's, you know, somebody who stands in front of a crowd and demonstrates like an exotic animal, right? And it's just like, there's something there for you about that. It's like, you're being almost called to demonstrate, display, be an example or teach something exotic that you have learn to handle and I want to say especially with these two cards together it could have something to do with almost like a kundalini awakening maybe that's what's going on with you recently Virgo is that you're being like activated and awakened and it's like all this kind of like um over abundance of energy that needs to be worked with and expressed right so however that is playing out in your life it's like suddenly it's like, it's almost like suddenly all these ideas are coming in. Suddenly there's too much to do. Suddenly you're having a lot of clarity about where you could be useful, like in different ways for different people, right? Because this one up here feels like a very specific kind of individual or a very specific situation that you are focused on helping to rebalance. But this stuff down here feels much broader. It's almost like you're calling, uh, you're, you're like deciding to give classes about what it is that is occurring within you. And the fascinating thing is it's almost like it all seems to be happening at the same time. It's not like this has happened years ago and you're a master of this kind of work or, or, um, completely knowledgeable about what is occurring. It's almost like you're being encouraged or inspired because this feels like something that has already occurred to you. It's maybe something that you're already doing that it's like something new is happening within you. A new thing is awakening within you. A new energy is moving through you. You have something new to work with. And it's talking about, it's almost like teaching it as you learn it, something like that, or teaching it as you experience it. It's not really necessarily that you're learning it. It feels somehow familiar to you, even if it's new, even if it's newer in your life, it feels um, natural. Like this is this has always been a part of you. So even though it might be just rising up now, it feels so natural that even though it's a new start in a sense, you know what you're doing, even if you're only kind of discovering that as you go. And that's what this grace card talks about too, right? It's like realizing how seamlessly something is unfolding for you because you're being supported by the universe, because this is in a sense like meant to be, this is who you are. It's coming completely naturally to you, right? So it's talking about that. It's saying basically, with the hollow bone teachability. Oh, this is interesting, actually. It's kind of connecting the two situations. It's saying, Virgo, in the meantime, while you're waiting for this, um, this other situation to play out, just get busy doing this other thing that seems to be kind of happening for you simultaneously. It's almost like it's gonna be really easy for you to just, to just stay busy and forget about that other focus but it's almost like you need a bit of a nudge to shift into this other gear because you are, like I said, feeling the need to check on it. So this is rising up. This is a tension that is being picked up within you about wanting to check in or kind of like poke it or, you know, you know what I mean? Sit and watch the pot boil. And it's saying, instead of doing that, go over here and kind of jump into this other focus because it'll help kind of pass the time you won't realize before you know it. It's like the manifestation is on your doorstep. 
But also what's coming through suddenly now with this hollow bone is that it's like this is something that you are made for or meant to do as well, for example, but you have to be a clear channel to do that. And it's almost like something about this situation could kind of um, frustrate this process. But interestingly, it's almost like they both help each other. If you shift your focus into over here into this teaching or sharing, being an example is kind of what it's talking about. It's like, I've got this new thing, this new exotic thing, right? That's the thing. That's the fascinating thing. It's exotic, meaning it's new, it's fresh and new, but at the same time, it's coming in as completely natural for you, right? So it's like, it could be a new discovery, but it's something that feels so right and comfortable for you that it's flowing effortlessly. But also, of course, because you've got the grace energy carrying you, working with you, working through you this new magic, early magic. Okay, so they're working, they're complementing each other in the sense of, what was I gonna say there? Something about, you need to clear your channel in order to be an effective teacher, for example, and clearing your channel to be an effective teacher actually helps kind of, um, Have the uh, create the underlying energy for the other situation to almost uh, play out in a faster, more efficient, seamless way, right? It's like if you're if you're watching it and checking in on it, it just gets frustrated. It feels like it actually does slow it down somehow, right? Because you are interfering with it or influencing it, and so it's saying if you come over here and get busy doing other things, it the whole the whole thing gets cleared out. The energy stays clean and it flows faster. See what I'm saying? Okay, so I'm going to continue to pull cards and create an extended. If you're interested in that, link is in the description. And if not, I will see you next time. Thanks. Bye.